Okay, any other questions on this? All right. Um, these are a couple others since I got this up here. So <laughs> that, we'll let that go. Okay. So let me uh, just go to my. So let's look at some inflation. In some people that have done this. All right. This is Zimbabwe. It was mentioned a case study in this chapter for you. This is a little thing on Zimbabwe. Together as a little display of some of our clients. There's a series of 27 official notes. These are currency from the country in Zimbabwe. And uh, take a look here. This starts out at $1. The date on it, I don't know if you can zoom in and see that. But uh, in 2007, they had ones and then, of course, fives, tens, and twenties. And this was uh, the currency that was being used. And uh, as we well know, that happened, the, the hyperinflation started to kick in, and they started to print higher and higher denominations as people demanded more currency. And so they got up to 500 and 1,000, we're still in 2007. Here in 2008, they started printing in the tens of thousands. So in a period of uh, you know, less than one year, we went from ones, fives, tens, all the way up to tens and twenty thousands. Started looking up here at fifty thousand, hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, and one million dollar bills. And it just kept going and going and going. Uh, let me show you over here we get the billions of one and five and ten and twenty and then here's a fifty billion dollar bill. On July fourth of two thousand eight, a cat coat would have cost you fifty billion dollars for breakfast. <laughs> but at lunchtime it would be a hundred billion. And by the time you got to dinner, it would be $150 billion. Their inflation rate, as you know, was approximately from 10 to 27 pound. Something that's just staggering. And uh, by the time they started printing, you know, they said, well, forget the, the billions, let's just go to the trillion. They started printing 10, 20, 50, 100 trillion dollar notes. Uh, they hired a German company to, uh, to print these. And they placed the order for these, and by the time the German com company was finished actually printing them, uh, they weren't worth the paper and they think that they could make them. So the German company never delivered them. They were never circulated. So these are, um, these are all you know, circulated uh, banknotes, but it illustrates how fast, how quickly, and how devastating type of inflation can be. 2007 to 2008, in a period of less than two years, about one and a half years, uh, the currency imploded and now they don't even have National currency in Zimbabwe, they have these hard currencies, gold and silver. Quite a lesson in one, I don't think it will let play. Yeah. I'm going to miss this up. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. Bye, Eagle. Yeah, we go. All right, so comments on that? I think it's nice to see those, uh, to actually see the bills. It's almost absurd, isn't it? Oh, we need to buy some more stuff. Or, or, oh, it takes so many of these. 20s, let's make $10,000 bills, okay. And then we get up to the trillions, a trillion dollar bill. That's just insane. Okay, so um, uh, the next video I want to do, uh, we're gonna have some in-class uh, points today for this. So I want you to come up with uh, some questions for Uncle Milty. And I figured there's nobody better, in my opinion, to give a, a little talk on monetary policy. Uh, that in kind of, which is related to the section that that Milton Friedman. So we'll give this a whirl here. Uh, How many people? Uh, the first step. Uh, oh, as many as you think are. are the the recognize that it is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. You're returning this in after. Aware of yourself. Too much money. I have a more rapid increase in the quantity of money than an output. Moreover, in the modern era, the important next step is to recognize that today governments control the quantity of money. So that as a result, the 
inflation in the United States is made in Washington and nowhere else. Of course, no government any more than any one of us likes to take responsibility for bad things. We're all of us human. If something bad happens, it wasn't our fault. And the government is the same way. So it doesn't accept responsibility for inflation. If you listen to people in Washington talk, they will tell you that inflation is produced by greedy businessmen, or it's produced by grasping unions, or it's produced by spendthrift consumers. Or maybe it's those terrible Arab sheep who are producing. Now, of course, businessmen are greedy. Who of us isn't? Trade unions are grasping. Who of us isn't? And there's no doubt that the consumer is a spendthrift. At least every man knows that about his wife. But none of them produce inflation for the very simple reason that neither the businessman nor the trade union, nor the housewife, has a printing press in their basement on which they can turn out those green pieces of paper we call money. Only Washington has that printing press, and therefore only Washington can reduce inflation. If you listen to the people from the communist world, they'll tell you that inflation is a capitalist phenomenon. That's not true. If you look at Europe today, one of the most rapid rates of inflation in Europe has been in Yugoslavia, which is a communist country. One of the slowest rates of inflation has been in Switzerland, which is a capitalist country. So inflation is not a capitalist phenomenon. But neither is it a communist phenomenon. If Switzerland has low inflation, the United Kingdom in recent years has had inflation rates running up to 20, 25% a year. Italy has inflation rates today of that order of magnitude. Inflation is not a capitalist phenomenon, it's not a communist phenomenon, it's a printing press phenomenon. Now in saying the capitalist, that inflation is a printing press phenomenon, in saying that inflation always taught by a more rapid increase in the quantity of money than an output, you're only at the beginning of the problem because you must distinguish the immediate cause from the more ultimate cause. You must ask, why is it that the quantity of money increases too rapidly? But before I go on to that question, I just want to settle for once and for all the point that inflation is a monetary phenomenon. That proposition has been documented over and over again. We have evidence for the United States for over 100 years, for Great Britain for 200 years, for Sweden for 200 years. There has never in history been an inflation that was not accompanied by an extremely rapid increase in the quantity of money. There has never in history been an extremely rapid increase in the quantity of money without an inflation. But in order to persuade you of this quickly and with a minimum waste of time, I brought a few pictures along to show you that will graphically illustrate the proposition about the relation between money and inflation. And I'd like to, uh, if we can start with the first of those uh, slides now, maybe you can make out that there are this two lines. This is literally an easel. That chart is for the United States, and it covers the 13 years from 1964 to, uh, to through 1976. And one of those charts, the solid line, is a quantity of money per unit output. And the other line, which is a dashed line, is a consumer price index. Those two lines cross in 1970 because that's the way they're constructed. Both of those series were expressed on 1970 as a base of 100. In order to get the two series in the same scale. But there is nothing whatsoever in the arithmetic of it to make those two curves the same elsewhere. That, uh, and I may say that the quantity of money that's plotted there is a quantity of money for a year ending six months before the price increase. So that you are not, uh, uh, there's nothing funny about that. And you can see 
that the two lines are almost indistinguishable. Now, I've done a segment of 13 years up there, but if I had a segment of 100 years, the relationship would be the same length throughout the whole of that period. But you may say that's maybe that's only for the United States. But uh, what about other countries? And so let's have the next slide. The next slide is for Germany for the same period. And again, the same story. Now the interesting thing here is that you can see that the quantity of money for a while in the later later say in the 70s was running ahead of the price index. But now they're coming back together again. And that's a behavior you very often observe. The quantity of money per unit of output is the major factor that from the immediate sense determines the price index, but it doesn't operate instantaneously. Sometimes there are delays in a year or two, but sooner or later they all come back together. Well, the United States and Germany are very similar countries. What about another country? Let's have the third show. And the third chart there is supposed to be for Japan. I can't read it. Is that what it says up there? That's for Japan. And you will notice that the Japan experienced a much greater price rise than either the United States or Germany. But Japan has now been coming back. It's done a remarkable job of controlling the quantity of money. And as a result, the rate of price inflation in Japan has come down to close to 30% a year to where today, in the period after this chart, it's back down to about 7%. But again, you have the same synchronism between the two charts. Now, the next chart, let's have the next chart, which is for Great Britain. You can see each one of these has a little bit more inflation than the preceding one, but each one of them, you again have the same relationship in every case between the quantity of money and uh, prices. Now, one of the interesting things about that comparison between Japan and the United Kingdom is you will hear many people telling you that the real reason you have inflation is because of trade unions. If you listen to anybody telling you about Great Britain's plight, they will tell you the real problem in Great Britain is that you have such strong trade unions that they push up wages and that causes inflation. Well, if that explains this relationship for Britain, what explains the previous chart for Japan, where trade unions are not very important, or much weaker than they are in Great Britain? Or what explains the next chart, which is a honey, for Brazil? That's, can we have the next, the last chart? Now that's a little, that's an inflation that's really an inflation. That's one of these baby inflations we've been buying with. Of course, there are still better ones in Argentina and Chile, but uh, we don't have a big enough room. Now, here again, if trade unions cause inflation, as you know, Brazil has a military government, and trade unions have absolutely nothing to say about anything except as they are branches of government uh, apparatus. So that it's clear you cannot explain in the case of Brazil the inflation by trade unions, but you can see very clearly that you can explain it by changes in the quantity of money. Thank you. We can have the lights back on. All right. Good your final touches on your questions. I'll come around and pick those up.
Open for a couple few questions for old Uncle Milty. So, who's got the best question in this pile? What was the question he was uh, you mentioned on there that he was going to answer? Why does the question? Why does the question write down? Why does the question write I'm not sure which yeah, one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't know. But so Milton kind of made this argument. Um, now his data there show he was making kind of a short term, long term argument at that point. And so what we're going to get into on Wednesday is if the quantity theory of money doesn't really hold up in the short run, what does cause uh, what causes inflation or what, what, what's the impact on uh, money demand and money supply um, in the short run. So what drives that? So we're going to develop a kind of a modified, uh, it's usually referred to as Keynesian, but then it was uh, added on top of that, which is, which is what we, the Janet Yellens of the group would be paying more attention to with the demand and supply of money thinking of, of happening to interest rates. And so we're going to bring that in, and then that's going to kind of bring this uh, this chapter to a close. So um, I'm going to pass back these things. And uh, one other thing. Oh, chapter 18 test, Wednesday night. So it's open now. You can get out and do it anytime you like. But the previous chapter before, make sure you get in there. And we'll call it a day. Extra credit, Extra credit tomorrow. Yes, I sent that out. Thank you for uh, Greg's presentation. Jacob, Jacob, you did you email me your questions? No, I was gonna ask, so I can just email you these right now. Yeah, why don't you just email them right now? Yep. All right, cool. Okay. Did I get a red All right, Jacob, we'll see you. Did you have any questions for me?